All right, guys, welcome to another crate of the week. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the This Error crate. And this crate is basically a utility crate that helps you write less boilerplate when you're creating custom error types. And as usual, before we get started, if you're looking for some good Rust or TypeScript content, make sure you check out my Udemy videos. All right, so let's get started. So um, if you've ever created your own custom types for errors, you know that uh, there's a great deal of boilerplate that you have to write. Now, as you can imagine, if you are building uh, custom error types for a very large project, you might be dealing with enums and that just adds to the amount of boilerplate that you need to create. So uh, to kind of show that, let me create a simple error type. Um, and we're gonna do this in the standard way. In, in other words, we're gonna implement the error trait in STD. And in order to do that, we first have to derive from debug and then th since this is an enum right here, we're gonna create a couple of variants. So in the case of the first one, we're not gonna have any tuples or any fields associated to it. <clears throat> and then in this case, we'll add some fields. So we've got two fields. One indicates the, um, the field name that uh, triggered the validation failure, as well as the actual fail failure message itself. And then finally, we'll add a tuple type, and then it will contain the specific error or the custom string of the error for the network error type. So then if you're doing something like this, then you need to, you need to implement the, uh, the error trait from STD, but you also need to implement display and this is really where most of the boilerplate stuff comes from. So I will just add the implementation in here. So we're first gonna figure out, let's just hide this. We're first gonna figure out what uh, variant of the enum is being represented. So in this case, we'll just start in the order that we created these guys. Right, so that's the first one. And then this one contains the two fields that we have to deal with. So we'll indicate the two fields in here. And then finally, we have the network failure. Uh, I'll just put it like this. Okay, so um, because we don't have a particularly uh, involved type that we're customizing right now, 
there isn't that much that we had to write, but you can, you can imagine in a larger project where you have, for example, if you're making um, SQL X or diesel calls to the database, and then you want to create a whole bunch of different error types to handle all the different entity types that you may have and specific errors um, for those, or maybe some custom route errors, you could end up with a lot of boilerplate code, right? Now, um, the way that we can very easily uh, not have to write so much of this boilerplate is by using this error. And by using this error as a derive, right? Just as a derive, we're able to eliminate effectively all of this that we would normally have to type out by hand and then decide about, you know, how we're going to, we're going to deal with fields and tuples and all of this stuff, right? So if we give it the same variance, And in this case, I'm just going to make the um, I'm going to make the tuple type to be to be an IO error. And I'll show you in a moment what that's for. But so so we we derive from the error uh, trait that's coming from this error. And then that helps to eliminate all of the boilerplate code that we were writing before. However, in order to complete this, we do need to indicate um, some level of the string messages that are going to be involved in each variant of our error type. So in this case, we'll just do basically what we did before. Right, so there's one. So then in this case, we have these fields. So how do we indicate those and how do we include those into the actual uh, string message itself? So then if we do something like we did before, we are able to inject the specific fields by doing dot notation like this. Right? So this is a lot, if you've ever used like Swift UI and stuff, this is a lot like Swift syntax where we don't have to I indicate the actual object itself. We just do the dot and then the field or the member uh, associated to that object. So it's basically like the same sort of thing. And then finally, in the case of a tuple, we would do dot zero to indicate the first tuple, which of course in this case, there's only one, so it's dot zero. So this, to me, is a lot better than this. And again, because we haven't really fleshed out the number of variants and the number of different error types, it doesn't immediately, you know, kind of um, impact you in terms of how much time and boilerplate it can save. But obviously, the more error types that we have, the more variants that we have um, in error types that are enums, it can save a lot of time and it can save a lot of boilerplate. So then if we, just to show you what this looks like,
So if I print these out, let me just shift these over. Right, so that might be a typical validation message for a required field. And then finally, we have the network error. And in this case, as I said before, going to do an IO error. So we need error kind and we'll make it a network error. And then since our type right here is an impl of std error, we'll just pass that in and we'll just pass in the network. So we'll do um, my custom network error okay so now we're going to print out everything and just to see what it looks like so i'll just make this a little bigger and you can see you can see right here, we have the server error, internal server error, um, the validation error, the field name, username, username cannot be empty, and then the network error, which is a combination of our, this error type that we created, plus the my error type that we created. Yeah, so that was a super quick look at this error. Obviously, there's a lot more features to it than that, and different ways that you can customize um, your errors, but I just wanted to give you guys an overview. So like the video, subscribe, and thanks for watching.